Hey everybody, it's Tiffany from Quilters Workshop and today I'm going to do sort of a little bit of a more crafty video just because um, I wrote a couple of blog posts about DIY fabric paint and how I like to do um, my stencils and my t-shirt painting and stuff like that um, and I had an email request for a video so here we go. Um, so today I picked up a really cool stencil that looks like this. Um, it has a bird and some little branches and stuff. I thought it was really, really cute. I do normally make my own stencils, so I'll print out um, like a silhouette from the internet just on regular computer paper, um, cut it out with like a small X-Acto knife, tape it onto my shirt, and I'm ready to go. Um, the other thing is that I do not buy fabric paint. I like to use just regular acrylic paint, so today I'm going to use black, so I have, um, this is actually folk art paint, but it's still acrylic, so it doesn't matter, and um, a lot of my theme is to always use whatever you have on hand to be, like, as thrifty as possible, so <laughs> here I am using super, super old black paint. Um, it's not perfect, but that's okay, because we're going to be adding in some fabric medium. And I just picked this up at Michael's, but you can also get it at Joann's or Hobby Lobby as well. Um, you might even be able to find it at Walmart. Um, mine's the Craftsmart brand, and this is only like $2 maybe. So considering how expensive fabric paint is to buy, to buy it in like every color that you need, it's way cheaper to just use regular craft acrylic paint that you have on hand and then add in some of this. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour... A lot of black because I have a, a pretty big stencil like bigger than what I would normally be doing into a container and then I'm going to add about 50% of what's there in black in the fabric medium so the ratio is like two to one um, and then you're going to mix that together really really well one thing I just wanted to address really quickly is that the fabric medium does not change the color of your paint I have heard a lot of people say like yeah that's a good idea and yeah it's a good way to keep the cost down for fabric paint but it doesn't actually come out the right color and if you want your colors to be accurate you should just buy fabric paint already made false it does not change the color of your paint I promise um, even though you're using a lot of it and even though this is just a white opaque color it will not change the color of your fabric paint okay so now I've got the stencil attached to my shirt so I just um, laid it on where I wanted it to be and I put some masking tape around the edges just so it doesn't shift on me while I'm painting and I've also put a piece of like a plexiglass um, inside just to keep the paint from running through but you can just use a piece of cardboard or like an old magazine like anything just to keep the front of your shirt from touching the back of your shirt um, so I've already gone ahead and um, poured in my um, black acrylic paint and then added my fabric medium and I've just stirred it together in that little pile right there but when I actually go to apply my paint to the shirt I like to use um, like sponge brushes like this so generally I'll use this one you can see I've used it before um, but if you were going to do like a bigger design they come in like lots of different sizes so I just like to use um, the sponge brush because I feel like um, it gives it a more like easy even application um, and it gets onto the fabric really well um, and it kind of gives more of like an airbrush look rather than like the strokes that you would see if you used a regular brush. Okay, so I've just finished painting over the whole thing and I did just want to point out um, because I noticed while I was doing it that rather than actually like stroking it, I do more of like a dabbing motion, especially with the, um, the sponge brushes. Now that the... Um, paint has all been dried. What we're going to do is the very final step. We're going to bring it over to an iron and you're going to place your t-shirt so that the design is face down on the ironing board cover and you're going to want to make sure that you have something underneath. I just put some lined paper there um, because what we're going to do is we're going to reach into the bottom here and we're going to iron um where the design is and you're just you're not going to use any steam or anything just like a dry setting and when you roll the iron around um on the back side it's going to kind of help bond the paint to the inside of the shirt or like the area of the fabric that is attached to the paint and that's just going to help the paint um to stay on while you're washing it 
and it's really important to make sure that you do have a paper or maybe a scrap piece of fabric or something else underneath of your shirt because if you don't you're going to iron it and you're going to lift your t-shirt up and have a big outline or a mirror image of what is on your shirt and I'm only telling you that because I've done it before if you see over here I have a lovely orange stain on my ironing board cover from the last time that I did a t-shirt okay and then after you iron it and flip it over your shirt's gonna look all done and beautiful except when you touch it it is going to feel a little bit rough at first um, and you're thinking oh my goodness it's because I used acrylic paint however after the very first wash and I have another shirt here to show you after the first time you wash it it goes absolutely smooth and when you run your hand over it you can't even feel the difference between the cotton and the paint it's just like one continuous line 